everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, whenever you're watching this, great to have you with us. My name is Dave, and uh, it is the Saturday before Christmas, so we have one week to go until Christmas 2021. Um, and I wanted to, hopefully you're having a good uh, season so far. Hopefully this week is going to uh, be able to give you a little bit of rest and relaxation before um, the busyness and the craziness of actually Christmas Day, but I'm hoping that we can all just find time to just exhale a little bit and just enjoy the season. So I wanted to, this will be our last um, devotion for the year, and I wanted to uh, tell a story. I found this cool story on DesiringGod.org, and it's a story by John Piper, and I liked the message of it and the idea of it, and I thought it'd be kind of a cool way to um, just chat a little bit about Christmas and about what it all means and what it looks like and, and what uh, Jesus obviously brings uh, so importantly to this season. So let me just kind of read this to you. Maybe I'll inter, you know, kind of put a little spin on it as we roll through it. But I really like the idea of this. It says this. Near the end of the Second World War, behind the enemy lines in Nazi Germany, there were prison camps where American soldiers were kept. And in this one camp, they were not well fed. They were starving, thin, discouraged, wondering if they would ever go home again and see another Christmas. And the Nazi guards watched them behind the fences with their downcast faces and their slumped over shoulders, scarcely speaking to each other. But suddenly one morning, everything had changed, it seemed. They were still behind the fences. They were still not fed. They were still very sick, and the guards noticed that they were happy. They were smiling. They were talking. They were gathering in little huddles. Every now and then, you could hear a hoot from somewhere. The guards had no idea what was going on. A little transistor, a little transistor radio, you know, a little radio had been smuggled in, and the American POWs heard the news that the Allied forces had landed, that they had triumphed. They were moving steadfastly inland, and it could be just days before their rescue because liberation was happening. The point of that little story is the power of news, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. Nothing had changed except news. News that awakened hope. And then he references this verse from, a couple of verses from Luke, and it says this, Luke 2, 10 through 14. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. But unto you, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, right? And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill, goodwill towards men. We should actually have Linus read that for us, right? That's the little, uh, a few verses that he has in that little Christmas special, the Charlie Brown Christmas special. But the point is news came. News came to those soldiers, and news comes to us in the form of, of this angel. We're very much like those prisoners because as you look around the world, right, horrific things come into our lives all the time. Like a house that burns down or a husband that's lost too early. Like the soldiers, you feel like the fences are still up and the food is not very good. You're still in the camp. And yet, news is broken in and it changes everything. It changes everything. In fact, the news of Christ as a savior is better than the news of Allied troops for this reason. There, there were a few American soldiers in the barracks who were so sick and emaciated, they knew they wouldn't last until the liberation came. And so liberation for them at the earthly level meant nothing. It didn't help their cause. It didn't help what they were going through. But that's not true for us, right? Because unless Jesus comes back before we pass, we will die in the camp, right? And he came in order that our guilt might be taken away and our sin might be covered, and a perfect righteousness might be provided. He gave himself to be eaten by the lion of death and the devil, so that death's belly, he might poison 
that lion to death. And the lion would then regurgitate him on the third day. The lion dies and he's alive. And he will raise us up from the dead with him. That's, that's said in only the way that John Piper could say it, right? I've never actually heard it say this way. The lion would then regurgitate him on the third day. Amazing. So whether we live or whether we die, because of Christmas and Good Friday and Easter, we live. I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet he shall live. That's John 11:25. 25. We have this amazing Savior, this great Savior. I pray that you know him and love him, and that when you sing a song like, Oh, come let us adore him, your heart really does adore. Let us adore him because of his absolute existence. Do you remember the exchange between Jesus and the Jews in John 8, 57 and 58? So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Said in only the way that Jesus can say it. Adore him for his absolute existence. Adore him for his infinite, omnipotent power. Through him all things were made. There's not a galaxy in this universe that wasn't made by Jesus. Adore him for his absolute power. Adore him for his infinite knowledge, right? The Bible says that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ Jesus. And if you've been following along in our Matthew study, you're, you're realizing that. I'm realizing that. It's just incredible the way he spoke and how relevant and it, it just uh, how awesome it was. That's Colossians 2, 3. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ Jesus. Adore him for his humility. You see, humility during this season is interesting. We're not... When you get right down to it, like, we're not very humble. If you think you're humble, you haven't quite gotten there yet. But if any of us has made any progress at all, it's because we're finite, right? We're fallible and we're sinful. And Jesus is none of these things. His humility was chosen. He chose to be lowly. He chose to be a servant. He chose to be obedient unto death that he might die in our place. Adore him for his humility and adore him for his grace. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And finally, let's adore him for his present life and for his promise to be with us to the end. You're going to walk out of here in just a few minutes, right? You're going to walk away from this video. If you know him as your savior, if you embrace him this Christmas as your Lord and the treasure of your life, you will walk away from this video and he will never leave you. He wants to minister to all of us today, right? He wants to minister to all of us today. So as we roll into this week, as we roll into this uh, what could be crazy or what could be liberating? What could be a time of, you know, five, six, or seven days of just complete and utter adoration and worship to our Father? You kind of make it what it is, right? And that's why I love what he says here, adore him for his humility. Just, this isn't about us, right? It's not about the presence. It's not about all that's going to be happening over the course of this week. This is all about Jesus. It's all about his grace, his mercy, his compassion, his love, his humility, his adoration for us as people. It's all about him. It's all about everything that he did for us. He came to this earth to die for us. That was his sole purpose, to teach us and then to die so that we could have life. So when we look at Christmas and we say, oh, it's all about this, this, this. No, it's all about Jesus. It's all about who he is. And it's all about his absolute existence. Man. Um, so that's how I wanted to kind of leave it. I just wanted to kind of introduce this story and then just talk about... I'm just looking through these notes again. Just our adoration for him. Maybe that's the word for this devotion, is adore, adoration. And um, 
I, I think we get lost in all of it. And we just can't find a way to settle our hearts and souls to a place where we're actually adoring Jesus. I've been starting, uh, we're out on tour for this whole month and doing 17 or 18 shows. And I've been starting a lot of my shows. Actually, I think all of them I've been starting with just the chorus of, oh, come all ye faithful, right? Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And that's what all of this is about. Like when we sit down for 90 minutes or two hours, whatever these shows end up being, it's all about adoring Jesus. It's about adoring him in, in the form of worship and just letting the words and the, and the lyrics and the melodies and just all of this stuff just kind of be absorbed in our soul so that we can then adore Jesus through our worship. So maybe that's where this ends today for this particular devotion is, oh, come let us adore him. Adore his mercy. Adore his grace. Adore his humility. Adore his love. Adore his compassion. Adore his absolute existence. I love that phrase that, that Piper put in here. Adore him for his absolute existence. Adore him for his, his love. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of, I get lost sometimes in these words because it's so, it's, it's hard. We've been talking about this a lot this year. It's hard to just let it all go and just say, Jesus, today I come to you and I'm adoring you because of your goodness in my life. Like how often do we actually get the chance to just stop? So what I want to do is maybe over the next couple of minutes here at the end of this devotion, I'm going to put a couple of songs in and just give us a minute to just worship and let God speak to us through worship. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you for being a part of all that we're doing this year. I mean, I'll get the, the final numbers, but uh, we probably saw, I want to say, two, three, four hundred kids' lives changed and saved this year because of the work that we've done together. Um, it's absolutely incredible, to, and it's humbling uh, to be in a ministry like this with you guys. So you guys that are members over at joindaysband.com, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know why we do this and what it's all about. For you guys that are not members, this is the time to join, right? We're going into a new year. Get started in, um, start your year right with the ability to uh, have daily devotions sent to your email inbox. Have weekly Bible studies. Start your year with uh, with Jesus, basically. And we're, we're trying to build and, and put together a way that makes, makes it easy to absorb uh, Him and His teachings. And so uh, if you want to find out more, head over to joindaysband.com and you can check out that page. There's a video there that'll walk you through kind of like what's involved in our membership area. And then there are four different levels that you can join at, either monthly or annually. There's discounts if you go annually, but um, get involved. There's a lot going on in our community, and we want you involved in all of it together with us. Okay? So uh, enjoy these. I think I'll put maybe two songs, I think. Um, I really haven't planned this out yet, but enjoy this time. Enjoy just a little bit of worship, a little bit of, uh, of adoration of our Savior. And I just pray that this Christmas season and this new year, as we approach this new year, like all of this would just be done with humility and with adoration of our God and our Savior. So prayers up for you. May the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of love, and the God of joy fill your soul this Christmas season. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.
unconfirmed rumor, a shadow in the dark. You're a shining light for millions, but I just can't find the spark. Lately, I've been thinking about you as I stand outside your door. Is there anyone in that manger who could help me anymore? And all I want for Christmas is to truly believe that it's your voice that soothes my worries when my faith's in me. You're a hand to hold when my soul gets. It's much too dark to see If anyone could love me They say it's you who love me It's not on Christmas Eve I've never been an angel I'm not the first to see This time of year gets love Start following your star And all I want for Christmas Is to truly believe That it's your voice that seals my worries When my faith's in me Your hand to hold when my soul gets cold And it's much too dark to see if anyone could love me, they say it's you who love me. It's not on Christmas Eve, and I'm tired of being so tired and scared, so hungry and alone. I think I hear a shepherd calling me home. Christmas Eve.